Good morning. Welcome to Zion United Church of Christ here in Union, Missouri, in person or if you're watching online. It's a delight to have you here and a special welcome to anybody who might be visiting us. It's the traditional end of summer, Labor Day weekend, a time when we just kind of settle in and relax and prepare for what's coming this fall. So today we're just going to relax into the word and to being here together as a church family. So let us prepare to worship. Good morning. Please join me in the responsive call to worship. Give thanks to the Holy One. The God of our ancestors is with us. Give thanks to the Holy One. We call upon the name of our God, and our God responds. Give thanks to the Holy One. The steadfast and faithful love of our God lasts forever. And now please join me in the uh, unison gathering prayer. Eternal God, when we search for you, we find you. When we seek you, we find you seeking us. Your presence among us changes our circumstances and our lives. We honor and worship you as an act of devotion and discipleship. Infuse us with your spirit that our witness and ministry may be a testimony to your everlasting love. Amen. 
Our first reading of scripture is from Psalm chapter 119, verses 33 through 40 from the Common English Bible. Lord, teach me what your statutes are about, and I will guard every part of them. Help me understand so I can guard your instruction and keep it with all my heart. Lead me on the trail of your commandments, because that is what I want. Turn my heart to your laws, not to greedy gain. Turn my eyes away from looking at worthless things. Make me live by your way. Confirm your promise to your servant, the promise that is for all those who honor you. Remove the insults that I dread because your rules are good. Look how I desire your precepts. Make me live by your righteousness. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. And before we rise for the opening hymn, I just want to take a minute to thank Karen for her 10 weeks of service to us. I, I, you've just made us all feel so comfortable, and, and I hope we've made you feel welcome. And it's just, just been a true pleasure. Thank you. And now, would you please rise in body or in spirit for our opening hymn number 668. Please be seated. I invite you to join with me in the unison prayer of confession in the bulletin. Forgiving God, we acknowledge that repentance opens the door to forgiveness and transformation. Help us turn from our desire for comfort over compassion easy solutions over challenging resolution, and avoidance over confrontation. We need your strength, fortitude, and conviction to overcome our fear of loss. Help us make room for the gains of new life 
for ourselves and our neighbors through our generous and sacrificial living. Amen. God is faithful to forgive and to redeem. God will sustain us through the hard work of confronting truth about ourselves, our communities, and our world. Receive the companionship of the Holy Spirit who leads and guides us in all truth. Amen. For announcements today, just reminding you that Pastor Nick will be back next week, yay! And uh, I know you'll be glad to see him. I also know that it's the traditional beginning of the program year in a church, and there's tons of stuff going on here at Zion. So make sure you read that announcements that are in your bulletin, or if you're watching at home, download them off the internet and find out what's going on, get involved, find a small group to be part of. And if you've been doing the same group for a long time, try something new. So there you go, there's my speech for the day. <laughs> <clears throat> Thank you all. You've been very welcoming, and I appreciate your um, energy and your welcome. The church is only here because we give to it with our spirit and our energy and with our money. So I remind us all to give generously to the church in the offering plate or online or however it is that you are able to give in whatever small and large amounts are um, really welcomed. So we give only because God has given to us first. So let us rise in body or spirit and give thanks to God. dedication. Generous God, thank you for seeding and inspiring generosity in us. May these gifts be a blessing to the ministry of this church. Multiply them and make us fruitful and faithful stewards of our time, talent, and treasure. Amen. You may be seated. Our second reading of scripture this morning is a letter of Paul to the Romans, encouraging them in their um, relationships in that city. I'm going to read from the New Revised Standard Version, updated edition. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in affliction. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Pursue hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be arrogant, but associate with the lowly. And do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay evil, do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, 
Never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Instead, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. much. Let us be in a spirit of prayer for a moment. Lord God, we ask that you be among us, that you send your Holy Spirit to, that we may 
each one of us hear your word and hear something that we need for this day and for the week ahead. Guide us now in our worship. Amen. So have you ever read a passage from the Bible, picked it up and opened it, and you thought, oh, that is just what I needed to hear for the day? Sometimes that happens. And sometimes you pick up the Bible and you read a passage and you say to yourself, huh, I never noticed that before. And it's not that you hadn't um, read it carefully before or that you missed something before. It's because the Bible is the living word. It has been passed down from generation to generation, from Abraham and Sarah to David and Matthew and Mark and Augustine and Martin Luther and Catherine of Siena and so many more people that have passed it down to us so that it can still speak to us. It speaks across the generations and across count continents and within congregations. It's the living word because the message that it is offered is not just the literal words that are written. In fact, there are over a thousand translations of the Bible with different interpretations and over 2,000 in different languages. So while it's important that we study the Bible and understand the historical perspective of what's happening in the world and in the lives of the people at the time the words were written, it is important to understand the context of what we're reading. It's also really important to just listen to the words and to see what meaning they have for you in the very moment in which you are hearing them or reading them. Today, I want to share with you one of the spiritual practices that I have come to really appreciate. It's called Lexio Divina. It's spelled with a T, but the T is silent. I learned this practice when I was studying with the Benedictine sisters in Colorado to become a spiritual director. In the practice, you listen to a passage of the Bible several times, letting it just like wash over you so that you notice what you connect with. It's not so much an intellectual analysis of the passage, but a connection to the words. So the first time you read it, you just try to connect with one particular word. The second time, you notice if there is like a phrase or something that stands out to you in your current life experience, and it may or may not contain the word that you listened the first time you heard it. And the third time you read it, you try to just deepen your connection and try to understand what the scripture is perhaps saying to you. Maybe there's some new insight. You can um, do this practice alone. However, doing it in community broadens the meaning of the scripture and it also helps build relationships. I can't really preach about Lexio Divina. I can best share it with you by letting you experience it. So I'm going to ask you to do something a little bit unusual for a Sunday morning, and I'm hoping that you will humor me and play along. What I'd like you to do is to divide yourselves into small groups. The exact number of people doesn't matter. Kind of three to five is a, an appropriate number. So if you, you know, you may have people around you or some people may need to get up and move around a little bit. So go for it.
Raise your hand if you don't have a group, because we need to make sure everybody's included. Looks like we're set. Perfect. Thank you. You guys are great. I <laughs> also want to mention that if you're watching this video at home, you can do this by yourself. You don't need to have a group of people. You can still experience it, and maybe later in the day you would want to share what words or phrases you came up with with a friend, or maybe not. That is totally up to you. So this morning, I'm going to read a passage three times. I'm going to lead you through it one at a time. I'm going to read the same passage that I already read from Romans. So you've heard it once. It's uh, Paul writing to encourage the Romans um, in how to be in relationship with their families, within their Christian community, and within the greater Roman um, Empire. So there will be, I think, lots of ways that you can connect with, this, uh, with the words that Paul gives us <clears throat> and just see what touches you. So this is not analyzing it. This is just, just listening and seeing where you're moved. It's a pretty long passage that I read earlier, so I'm going to shorten it a little bit and just read verses 9 through 18. So this first time through, I invite you to listen and just Pick out a word that, has, uh, that you feel connected to. After a brief silence, I'll ask you to share just that word, not your whole story, just that word with your group. Okay, so here we go. Romans 12. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in affliction. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Pursue hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be arrogant, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. So if you would now, just share if you feel like it. This is, you know, we're not going to force anybody to say anything if they don't want to. But if you feel comfortable, share with your group. Um, first, uh, your name if you don't know each other, because I forgot to say that earlier. And um, also, uh, the one word that maybe spoke to you. Go. Make sure everybody's had a turn in your group, please. All right, thank you. All 
All right, the second time through, I'm going to read the exact same words. This time, um, you might just listen for a whole phrase or something in the scripture that speaks to you, maybe how it relates to your uh, life right now. And then again, after a brief silence, I'll ask you to share with your group. This time, um, maybe a little bit more about what meaning you found in that particular phrase. So, from the writings of Paul to the Romans. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in affliction. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Pursue hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be arrogant, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. So I invite you now to share whatever you would like to share with your group. If you can just make sure everybody's had a chance that wants to speak. Okay, let's come back together. I'm going to read the passage one more time. This time, just see if there's anything new touches you. And I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to read it from a different translation. So it is going to sound different. Um, This is going to be from the message. So again, we'll have a brief silence, and then you can share anything that um, you feel called to share with your group about how the scripture touches your life today or, or what you've heard. All right. This is uh, the letter from Paul to the Romans. Love from the center of who you are. Don't fake it. Run for dear life from evil. Hold on for dear life to good. 
Be good friends who love deeply. Practice playing second fiddle. Don't burn out. Keep yourselves fueled and aflame. Be alert servants of the master, cheerfully expectant. Don't quit in hard times. Pray all the harder. Help needy Christians be inventive in hospitality. Bless your enemies. No cursing under your breath. Laugh with your happy friends when they're happy. Share tears when they're down. Get along with each other. Don't be stuck up. Make friends with nobodies. Don't be the great somebody. Don't hit back. Discover beauty in everyone. If you've got it in you, get along with everybody. So I invite you again to share as you feel called with your group about anything that you've heard that touches your heart. Okay, if everyone's had a chance to share, let's come back to our group. Now that I've invited you to talk during worship, it's time to be quiet. No. <laughs> Just kidding. <clears throat> you can talk and whisper amongst yourselves whenever you feel like. <laughs> Thank you for being an adventurous group. If you've never done this before, it's kind of a weird experience. I know the first time I did it, it was a little strange, but the more I've done it, usually we do it more in a small prayer group or at a retreat, but I've found it to be a really um, interesting way to begin to read the Bible um, and see what meaning it has. So I hope that um, the Holy Spirit was moving among you and you heard the word that you needed to hear for today. Since we don't have microphones, often in a small group or retreat, we would ask anybody that wanted to share with the light, wider group, but we're not going to do that today because we would really want to hear anyone who had something to say. But I hope you will continue to talk about it as you, you know, go downstairs and after worship. Let's take a breath and transition and be in a spirit. Do you guys want to move back to your seats you were in before? Yeah, okay, I'll give you a minute. All right, let's be in a spirit of prayer. Creating and transforming God, we thank you for today, for continuing to speak to us through our scriptures. May your word continue to be a lamp unto our feet and a light for our souls. We are grateful for the thousands of faithful people through the ages who have faithfully heard your word and passed it along 
that we today may be blessed by your living word among us. Help all of us to listen and discern your calling on our lives. On this Labor Day weekend, we ask you to mold us to be vessels of love as we labor in the world. We pray today for all the workers of this country, that their labor may be appreciated, they may be justly compensated and treated fairly. We pray for our country, that it may be a place where all contributions are appreciated and people respect one another in their differences. We pray for our family and friends and ask for safe travels and loving connections among families gathering this weekend. We ask for wholeness for those among us who are ill, peace for the grieving, and guidance for all those in transition. We lift now silently our individual joys and concerns to you. Thank you for hearing our spoken and unspoken prayers. We pray together now, remembering your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray in this way. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we prepare today for communion, let us sing hymn number 695 as we gather at your table.
Will you join with me as we say our UCC statement of faith, the one in the form of a doxology. We believe in you, O God, eternal spirit, God of our Savior Jesus Christ and our God, and to your needs we testify. You call the worlds into being, create persons in your own image, and set before each one the way of life and death. We seek in holy love to save all people from aimlessness and sin. You judge people and nations by your righteous will, declared through prophets and apostles. In Jesus Christ, the man of Nazareth, our crucified and risen Savior, you have come to us and shared our common lot, conquering sin and death and reconciling the world to yourself. You bestow upon us your Holy Spirit, creating and renewing the Church of Jesus Christ, faithful people of all ages, tongues, and races. You call us into your church to accept the cost and joy of discipleship, to be your servants in the service of others, to proclaim the gospel to all the world and resist the powers of evil, to share in Christ's baptism and eat at his table to join him in his passion and victory. You promise to all who trust you forgiveness of sins and fullness of grace, courage in the struggle for justice and peace, your presence in trial and rejoicing, and eternal life in your realm which has no end. Blessing and honor, glory and power be unto you. Amen. You are invited now. Is that on? Yeah, okay. You are invited now to share in the greatest feast celebration that could ever have been imagined that has been going on for generation and generation. As Jesus welcomed all to hear and participate in God's love, we too welcome all. Everyone here at Zion is invited to share at this table and certainly online. The communion stewards will come forward eventually and release you by rows to come forward to get a piece of gluten-free bread and a, a beverage. The uh, light-colored one is juice and the darker red is wine. Um, and at home, you know, when you're participating, whatever elements you have is just perfect. So come, if you are plain or fancy, if you are joyous or sorrowful, come if you are whole or in pieces, confident or questioning, come to this table where you are welcomed just as you are. It is with thanksgiving and praise that we come together to lift up our hearts and our lives to God. Let us pray together the invocation. Holy God, descend your spirit upon these gifts of grain and grape. Is that what's in your bulletin? Let me get my bulletin. Oh, it's not in there. Oh, how about I read the invocation? <laughs> Holy God, descend your spirit upon these gifts of grain and grape, whether on this table or in the homes of your people, that they might be for us the presence of the living Christ. Pour out your spirit upon us so that we might be reflections of your likeness in a hurting world, so that others might know the blessings of living in communion with you and one another. Through Christ, 
with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. On the night of his betrayal, Jesus gathered with some of his closest friends. We know them as the 12 disciples, but we know there were many gathered there, men and women, young and old, those who were privileged and those who were marginalized. And at that very table, Jesus took the bread, and when he had blessed it, he broke it, saying, this is my body broken for you. We take this bread as a reminder of Jesus' life for us. Likewise, after the meal, he took and poured out the cup. saying, this is a blessing of the new covenant. When you drink it, always remember me. And he passed it like the bread to every single person there. When we drink from this cup, we remember that Christ loves us and cares for us, and we have a covenant together. These are the gifts of God for all of us, the people of God. So take them now, remembering that Christ was born, lived, died, and was resurrected for you. Amen. May the stewards, uh, communion stewards come forward.
Would you join with me in our prayer of thanksgiving? Holy One, we give you thanks for the gift of your presence in the simplicity and splendor of this meal. Unite us in and through you that we may may faithfully proclaim the good news of your love, that your universal church may be a rainbow of hope in an uncertain world. Amen. I would invite you to rise in body or spirit, and we're going to sing 358, Love Divine, All Love Excelling. <clears throat> As we prepare now to go out into the world to love and serve God, I want to share with you one of the blessings from my Irish heritage. May the road always rise to meet you and the wind be at your back. May the sun shine gently on your face and the rain gently on your fields. Until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of God's hand. <laughs>